Hello, my name is Adam Sparks. I'm one of the creators of Short Answer. In this video, we want to just give you a basic walkthrough of what the platform is and how it works. To get started, you'll go to myshortanswer.com. If you don't have an account, you'll click sign up. You can sign up for free. Or if you do have an account, you'll click log in. I do have an account, so I'm just going to log in. In fact, I already am. And when you get all signed in, you'll see a landing page or a dashboard that looks something like if you want to create a question or activity in Short Answer, you'll click new question. And this is, this is where you'll be prompted to create activities for your students. So um, short answer works best with open-ended questions. So for example, if I'm teaching history, who was Abraham Lincoln and why was he important? Mediocre question, just for demonstration purposes. You can set a topic that will organize it into a, a, your library, which will live here. Um, and then we have for premium users stems and outlines, which will be AI generated. These will be available for students while they're constructing their response to this question or writing prompt. You can edit these as you see fit. And then down here is where you're set the feedback criteria that, that students will use across all the activities in short answer to provide feedback to one another. We pre-populate them with a few to get you started, um, but you can make these whatever you want. Hit enter. And then that's what the students will provide feedback using. I'll show you more about what I mean by that. When you click launch, it's going to give you a selection of activities. Right now, uh, as of 2024 with Short Answer, we have three activity types, All In, Parrot, and Battle Royale. I would encourage you to look into how each of these activities works in our separate videos on each one of them. But briefly here, all of them are going to follow a very similar structure. So I just kind of want to walk you through what that structure is. Okay, so in all short answer activities, when you select one and click launch, it's going to take you to a screen that looks like this. So students are going to need to go to myshortanswer.com and log in as students using a code here. As the students join, you'll be able to track who is signed in using the cards that are located here. As they submit, you'll be able to see their card will change and it'll say submitted. From a student's perspective, what they're seeing right now is something like this. So they see their prompt up here. The success criteria, which in this case is whatever you want, because that's what I just typed in as a teacher. They'll have their stems that can help them, or sorry, their tools that can help them get started over here. But then once they have a response they like, they'll click next, and they'll rate their confidence and they'll submit it. And now you'll notice on my teacher screen, it's submitted. Okay, now when I click begin feedback, it's gonna depend on what activity I have set up. So if I'm doing all in battle royale or parrot, this is going to look very different. So if you wanna know, more about each of those activities, I'd encourage you to check out those videos on our teacher resources page at myshortanswer.com. But in all activities, for students, it's going to be very similar. When you click begin feedback, the students will be have two answers on their screen, which is what you're seeing here. Notice that both of these, neither one of these is particularly strong, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And then they're going to read both responses and decide of these two, which one better contains the success criteria, which again can be whatever you want. So this might be clear topic sentence or strong supporting details or great explanation of Abraham Lincoln's presidency if you're working on content. Um, but students will read both responses and then click the one that they think better contains that criteria. Okay, there's only one success criteria in this one. So at the end, it's going to say overall, which one do you think is stronger? I think it's that one and then submit. Now I'll do two more because this is all in, but this will look different depending on the activity. The core thing you need to understand here is that all activities in short answer, we scaffold peer feedback through the medium of comparison. So we just give kids two peer responses that are anonymous. We say of these two, which one is better? The research base we grow out of shows that kids can do that at a high level. And by identifying the one they think that is stronger and explaining it on their own, they develop an internal sense of what makes for a quality response. Okay. Once all students have provided feedback, you'll click show results. This is an all in activity. So this is what it'll look like on this. It's going to look different across the different activities though. But in all of them, the point here is now we talk about as a class, the results of each activity. So this is again, where we have an opportunity for kids to articulate on their own, what makes for quality writing, depending on whatever um, success criteria or, or content that you're working on. When you end an activity in short answer, all the results will live in the results tab, which you'll notice is here on the right where you can see all your students' responses, the feedback provided, and a lot of other data. Otherwise, you can go back to questions, create more, launch them, and that's kind of the basics of the platform. Again, if you want a deep dive into the different activity types that we have in Short Answer, I'd encourage you to check out the other videos. But those are the basics of the platform. If you have questions, please reach out to us at info at myshortanswer.com. We're super excited to support writing instruction in your classroom. Thank you.